Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sneha and we'll be discussing the topic of infertility from gynecology in this video. So, infertility for a woman to conceive properly, for them to become pregnant, there are different parts which needs to function properly. First, there need to be an anatomically proper uterus and cervix. To allow the sperms to go inside and also for the embryo or for the conceptus to implant properly, the uterus and cervix should appear normal. The next is that the ovary should produce the eggs properly, which means that every month an ovum needs to be released. Ovulation has to occur properly. Next, this ovulated egg needs to travel through the portal, which is the tubes, to reach the uterus. Perm and the egg meets in the tube. So, the tubes needs to be patent and functioning for this ovary, for this egg to travel and to meet the sperm to form the zygote and this conceptus will then travel into the uterus for implantation. Last, from the male side, functioning sperms, normal sperms, or the important gametes from the male side and proper functional and structural sperms or important part. So, all of these factors or the major factors that need to function properly for women to conceive. Any of these, if there is an abnormality, it can lead to infertility issues or difficulty in becoming pregnant. So, what is infertility? When a couple is not able to conceive even after one year of unprotected sexual intercourse. Unprotected meaning they are not using any kind of contraception for more than one year, but they are not able to get conceived. It is called infertility. There is another term called fecundability, which is the ability for the couple to become pregnant in one cycle, in one menstrual cycle or one month which is around 25% in a normal person. Okay. So, who contributes to infertility? Infertility is needs to be dealt as a couple and there is no blaming of the wife or the husband. The male factor contributes to around 30% of infertility cases, whereas female factors such as ovulatory, tubal, uterine or cervix is responsible for around 40 to 55 percent of infertility causes. Combined together, it is around 10 to 20 percent. Sometimes there is a terminology called as unexplained infertility where the ovulation happens, tubes are functioning, uterus and cervix is normal and even the sperms are functional anatomically normal but the woman is not able to conceive which is called unexplained infertility and this happens in around 10 to 15 percent of people. Now, let's start with the ovulation factor because from the female side, having a proper egg through ovulation is an important part of becoming pregnant. So, for us to find out if the woman has ovulated or not, there are different techniques and let's look at the phenomena that happens throughout the menstrual cycle to find out how we can detect if the woman has ovulated or not. Okay. So, the first thing on the top is the level of LH and FSH hormone. The, the part that is shaded with light purple in the center is the ovulation period. So, if you notice he, here, just before ovulation, that is around 34 to 36 hours before ovulation, you can see that the LH hormone peaks or there is an LH surge. Once the LH hormone peaks, ovulation will definitely happen. So, this is one of the way in which you can detect if the ovulation has happened or not or will happen in the future. Second, if you look at the chart, it is the graph of the estrogen and progesterone level that, that goes up and down during the menstrual cycle. So, if you notice here, after ovulation, you can see that the level of progesterone increases very nicely. Progesterone level does not peak up before ovulation, but after ovulation, definitely that too in the in between, in the middle of the luteal or secretory phase, the progesterone inter is at peak. So, measuring the progesterone at this particular time can help us to find out if the patient has ovulated or not. Next is the 